Dominion Life Christian Center. Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, Oakland, California. So, dominion is enhanced by power. Without power, there is no dominion. Without power, domain is not secure. Now, may I say this to you? Some of the things that hurt people's life, that are problems to people, are the enemy encroaching on your territory. He encroaches on finances. That's why you see brokenness. He encroaches on health. That's why you see sickness. The only language out is the power for dominion. Praise the Lord. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist until now, Jesus was speaking, the kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom himself, if it is in this kingdom, serve us violence. So you're going to have to press to secure your domain, people of God. And it is possible. It is possible for you to be sleeping and no demons can fly through your hair space. I look at the geography of the world. Then I was, look, I was looking at the military strength of the U.S. I was following that story. There was no way. The possible ways for that boy to move from Russia where he is right now to... Um, Venezuela that wants him is to charter a flight and fly through some place in Africa there was no plane that he could afford that could fly that distance so they're going to have to stop in some countries that don't want to that don't want problem from the US so the military strength of, the, of America secures the domain enemy or criminals can't fly through their hair space. For your dom dominion to be secure, you need military strength in the spirit. So you need the power for dominion. Power for dominion. And power costs something. This country spends billions of dollars every year, every day, just on defense. Praise the Lord. From the days of John the Baptist until now. And in Psalms 110 verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Sit at my right hand. It may take some time, but stay in my presence until I make your enemies your footstools until they have become your footstools you are still vulnerable to the attacks then he says the Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion rule in the midst of the enemies Israel is a small nation in that place but they rule in the midst of the enemies you can't do anything with them number one God is backing them up and God positions some strength in some nations as their friend rule in the midst of their enemies rule in the midst of their enemies one of the things the enemy do you know that in every area of affliction or problems in life you have been held captive in that area that is what it means Every area of stronghold, every area of difficulties is the area that you have been captured by the enemy. Let's see what the Bible says. In Isaiah chapter 49 from verse 24, Shall the prey be taken away from the mighty? In other words, many destinies, many lives are prey in the hand of the enemy. Whatever you believe God for that you don't have, 
and the enemy is holding is because the enemy has seized it from you. <laughs> it is yours. God has it, but you can't feel it. The enemy is holding it. And the Bible says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the captives of the righteous be delivered? He said, but thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for I will contend with him that contends with you. In other words, God himself, a higher power has to be involved for you to be free. That would say it takes a higher power to take anything from a strong man. Matthew 12 and 29, he says, Or oh, how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man and then he will plunder his goods? So many destinies that have been in the strong man, so those represent strong man in people's life, oppositions. So it takes a stronger person to bind that strong man and you can set free. So power must be generated to bind the devil. Now, that is what he said to me. He said they lock him out of the test room. But in the realm of the spirit, a higher power came and opened the door. So this power must be generated. This power, I say this, you can fake and lie about manifestations. You can fake the anointing. It will be devoid of results. But power, you can press into the realm of power. I, I, I was interviewed briefly in New York for the event that we went for. And they asked me, what did you learn from this man? I said, what did I learn from the old man that went to be with the Lord? The cost of power. Miracles don't just happen. Miracles don't just happen. Miracles are provoked by direct effort of the believer. You want the miracles in your life? What are you doing to get it? And I said, God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter. If you do what he does, then you get the same result that he is getting. Praise the Lord. He say, oh, how can one enter a strong man's house? Now, if I see something from any of the kids in the children's department I put in my office, they can't take it from me. You will have to be stronger than myself to take it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't challenge the enemy, give to me what you took from me without walking in the realm of a higher power. And that is why many people have been frustrated. Now you are challenging the devil with less power. He's just looking at you. Jesus told this story. Also he said the same thing in Luke chapter 11 from verse 21. He says, when a strong man fully armed guards his own place, his goose are in peace. I pray in the name of Jesus. Any strong man that you have been their goose, a higher power will be provoked this week for your release in the name of Jesus. So Jesus says, when a strong man fully harmed God's his own place, his goose are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him, he overcomes him. And takes for him all his armor in which he trusted and devised a spoil. So this week we are going for power to divide the enemy's spoils in the name of Jesus. So that at the end of the day, all areas of captivities in your life, you will be free in Jesus' name. That is why Isaiah 58 and 6 says something. Talking about power, how to generate power. Isaiah 58 and 6 says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bond of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. So you can generate power in fasting and set free the oppressed. 
and that you break the yoke. As you wait on God this week, this week, all the power in the realm of the spirit that is needed for your freedom, you will contact in the name of Jesus. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Let me tell you once for this morning. If you are a born again believer and you don't like to fast, you have no basis for Christianity. You are just going with them. And that's not what you want to do. It's okay to come to church, it's okay to make it to heaven. But you must maintain your dominion. Power must be generated for dominion. And power is provoked as you wait on the Lord in prayer and in fasting. As you, as you wait on the Lord in prayer and fasting. And I pray that you will get to a point when fasting becomes an excitement to you. I thank God for the image is weak now. <laughs> the email is on life support. <laughs> so that's why I am praying that when you have opportunity to fast, people of God, this is real. Now I look forward to our prayer and fasting because you are looking at not eating, I'm looking at contact with power. I don't know if you have heard me pray with you over something, I'll tell you, see me the day before or the day after or the day of night of dominion because I would have interacted with power at every level. He said, is this not the fast that I've chosen to let the oppressed go free? To let, let, let the oppressed go free. Let's see, let's see Jesus' opinion of this. Hallelujah. Are you following me? In Mark chapter 9 from verse 14, the Bible says, and when he came to the disciples, Mark 9 and 14, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them immediately when they saw him. All the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him, and he has described what is going on, what are you discussing with them. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And Wherever it seizes him, it throws him down, it foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to, that's what we can call epilepsy. That is the area that the enemy has made prey of that boy. That is the enemy manifesting as a strong man to that boy. So he says, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down, it foams, and so I spoke to the disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered them and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Or how long shall I be with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought, they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and fell on the, on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked so he asked his father how long has this been happening to him and he said from childhood and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him but if he can do anything have compassion on us and help us Jesus said if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes immediately the father of the child cried out and said with fears Lord I believe help my heart believe then Jesus saw that the people came running together. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you. Let me say something for you before I go on. This boy was deaf and dumb. Jesus was going to tackle it. He, says, he said, Deaf and dumb spirit. That tells me there is a spirit behind every affliction. Cancer has a spirit. Poverty has a spirit. Unhappiness has a spirit. Depression has a spirit. Jesus himself didn't say, 
open your mouth and begin to speak. He didn't say, dumb mess, I rebuke you. He said, dumb and deaf spirit. When you are tackling with the things of the spirit, that's not when you want to go there casually. Deaf and dumb spirit. There is a spirit behind every affliction in life. Poverty has a spirit. Death, stubbornness has a spirit. Somebody once said, uh, this sickness now is, is common in the U.S., autism, so it's okay, it's just a thing. Just a deaf and dumb spirit. There is a spirit behind autism. There is a spirit by, by, behind every satanic manifestations. So when you want to engage this spirit, you don't go empty-handed. You go fully charged with power. I pray this morning that the power that it requires to challenge every spirit that troubles you will be contacted this week in the name of Jesus. We are going to rebuke the spirit of dumbness. We are going to rebuke the spirit of brokenness. We are going to rebuke the spirit of sickness, the spirit of lack, the spirit of, of depression. It, Jesus says, death and dumb spirit. Jesus himself. He knew there's a spirit behind it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Death and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter no more. The Bible says, then the spirit cried out. Then the spirit cried out. Convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead. Because that's where they dead. So that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. And he arose and when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately. The disciples saw some action, they saw some activities. So they came into the corner. Sir, so who happened? How did you do it? All of a sudden, you rebuilt up and death spirit, he convulsed, he died, he then you brought him up. So, secret. You know what he said? So he said to them, This kind cannot, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. Don't you like the testimony of Sister Chica? She said, two hours into the fast. Because in fasting, the spirit of poverty, of lack, was destroyed. And when you deal with the spirit, every other thing must cooperate. So, in prayer and fasting, what you do, you take the battle to the realm of the spirit. So, to be a Christian without a fasting life is to be wasting away in the realm of the spirit. Jesus said, this kind cannot, you call it sickness, but I know it's more than sickness. There is a spirit. Many people going through things today, financial collapse, financial issues, not being fulfilled in the place of work, and they blame it on the economy. Now, are you the world? When they say the economy of the world has collapsed, is the world your name? Is the enemy's lie to keep people in perpetual bondage that makes you excuse the reason for lack? Stop giving excuses to what is not God's plan in your life. Stop defending the devil in your life. This is the reason why it will happen. So that means it's allowed. 
He said, this kind cannot come out unless with prayer and fasting. Remember, it was a secret. They came to him, but he said, privately. And he was teaching the, the, his boys the right thing. He said, this kind. You know what he's saying? You know what? You can preach, you have faith, but with faith, there is power. Faith needs power. This kind cannot. People of God, when you take control from the realm of the spirit, actually manifestation is a must. Things will begin to answer for you. This kind can so prayer and fasting is an opportunity to win in life. To pray and fast is an opportunity to win battles. So when it is time to pray and fast, is a time to be excited. It's like praying and, and fasting is like you are going to get more harmonious. I don't have a gun, but I know if, if, if we do things like that, every time you buy a bigger gun, you'll be excited. Let me see the criminal that will come around. <laughs> do you know that's what I'm saying? So prayer and fasting, you see how unbelievers decorate their house, they collect guns. That's how you and I are supposed to be collecting prayer and fasting. Are you seeing people decorate their house with assault style, style rifles? Begin to buy it. They are happy. They feel secure on those things that have no security that could kill them themselves at the end of the day. <laughs> but there is more security that cannot backfire on you and the power that comes from on high. It has no shortcoming. It has no side effect. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power in God, the power generated from the Lord has no side effect. And it is the real power. So every time for prayer and fasting is a time to be excited. Because you know something is going to happen. Because as you fast, as you pray, you are doing more damage to the kingdom of darkness. You are pressing. You are gaining ground. You are enforcing your dominion. You are expounding your territory. That is what it means. When I say dominion from coast to coast, then it's by pushing. It's by pressing. You, now, the children of Israel, through the power and the backing of God, took over the territory of the enemies. So when the Bible says, have dominion, what he's saying is that fight for what you want. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep half dominion. So he didn't say, you are created for dominion, don't worry, you will dominate. You are in charge. If you like, sleep. If you like, be unbeliever. I've said it. No, that's not what he's saying. Otherwise, we should be seeing dominion everywhere today. That is what dominion life, God's purpose means. That is God's design. That is God's purpose for you and I. But you must walk the walk through spiritual warfare. Are you hearing me? So this week is the week of power. Somebody said the week of power. Somebody said this week is the week of encounter with power. I will encounter the power of God to rule and dominate in the name of Jesus. I am born to reign. I am born to rule. This week, the power that it takes to destroy the works of Satan in my life, I will encounter it in prayer and fasting. I am praying for power this week. You know what anointing means? Anointing means God's power. Every testimony that you see by the anointing is because God's power took over. Because God's power. Somebody shared testimony, a truck crushed a vehicle, 
No, nothing happened there because God's power stopped the truck. The same truck will kill some other people in the car, but God's power went to work. So God said, many are the afflictions. So Bible never says, God never tells you because you're a Christian. No, it's oppositions will come. But you will win them all. You are a better person to have won many battles than someone that is never battle tested. Dominion. Power for dominion. Even if the military is not mal is not functioning, they will still call the military. Even if their guns won't fire, they will still use to decorate their hand to secure their territory. People of God, prayer and fasting are your ammunitions. They are your guns. But this one, when you do it, it lives inside of you. No one flies through your hair space anyhow. That's what it means. Hmm? To be running away from people can't get a job done easily. <laughs> Some sort I say, it said, rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. And the testimony is better when they see it. Because they see how powerless they have been. Rule thou. If you have to choose before God, between God killing them and you ruling without them touching, isn't it better for them to see what is happening? They can't do anything. You know, for anything, you have people you can walk anyhow to any time. I know you want to get me, but you can't get me. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. So you are going to ask the law, the power to be untouchable in the midst of my enemies. I receive it by your grace this week. Praise the Lord. I have a couple of announcements. Our 8th anniversary is coming up from the 5th of September through the 8th of September. And we are going to be hosting a great man of God, Dr. Rob Thompson from Family Harvest International in Chicago. It is going to be a wonderful time. I invite you. I want you to come. I want you to come out. Be blessed. We are going to be having Friday morning sessions at 10 o'clock. And Friday general service sessions. We're going to be having a Saturday on the seventh at 10 a.m. This all this will be good for leadership, for pastors, for ministers. The, the, great, the great man of God is going to be a tremendous blessing to us in the Bay Area this weekend. Don't forget, from the fifth through the eighth of September, it is our eighth anniversary as the Union Life Christian Center. We is going to be here in Oakland. 3814 MacArthur Boulevard in our church auditorium. You are, don't forget all this is all this all these messages are gonna be powerfully packed. It is gonna be a time of encounter, a time of blessing with the Lord. I want to remind you again, Dr. Rob Thompson is gonna be ministering here live. I will see you there.